What's up, y'all? Got a banger from The Modern King. Let's get straight into it. It still hasn't hit me. He's the ordinary Joe who just hit it big. Really big. Mike Worski won $273 million. $173 million in the New Jersey Mega Millions jackpot. The 54-year-old winner is really enjoying his newfound celebrity status, but he's also finding himself in a bit of a pickle. Mike got divorced just five months ago. Now everybody is asking, will he give his ex-wife a share of his winnings? No! <laughs> I wouldn't! You were my ex five five months ago. The thing is, I'm up now. You had me when I was down and out, but I'm up now. So what are you talking about? Raised to be just entitled, like they're owed something for just sh showing up. Mm. I showed up, I'm owed something. I showed up on this date, you mm. owe me a meal. You owe me mm. entertainment, you owe me all this stuff. Mm. And what they do is they try to mitigate the man. Mm. They try to neuter him, they try to keep him controlled. And they put Thanks. ice on the wings. And every time that guy tries to go and do some level up, hey, you're gone too much. Well, it's met with some sort of criticism and some sort of frustration. And so you got these two different things. So the first thing as a man you gotta be, understand is you got to, if you're not already in a relationship, you gotta decide whether you're dealing with a princess. And if you're dealing with a princess, she's gonna turn into a tyrant when you get married. She's gonna be a Tyrant. Or are you dealing with a pioneer woman, a girl that's ready to take the hits with you? She's ready to go to war for you. She's going to freaking fight with you. She's going to put you back together. I had two marriages to compare this to. The yeah. first marriage was ice on my wings. Yeah. The marriage I have now is a pioneer woman. Yeah. That girl, man, she's the best person I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say it like that. This ain't pandering. This ain't trying to like, this ain't trying to get her to listen to this so I get laid later. <laughs> I'm just going to call, I'm just going to call it like it is. Twice yeah. if you're suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I <can> help. <laughs> Save me. Nobody talk to me about this. There wasn't a grown ass man that said, dude, huh. this is what you need to look for. You need yeah. to be careful. There's two types of women out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You're looking for the pioneer women and they are a dying breed. Yeah. And I'll tell you, that's why a lot of dudes are leaving and going to other countries right now to try and find those type of traditional women. There's a lot of those traditional types. This is why I say, man, you get, you get, you get one of two women, bro. You either get a queen or you get a princess. He calls it a pioneer woman. I call it a queen. A queen, a queen will go through the trenches with you. She will be a peasant with you go through the mud, help you build the kingdom. When a woman does that, she goes through the mud with you. When you got no money, no clout, no status, no career, no nothing, she's willing to just be with you for you, your personality, who you are, the way she makes you feel, or the way you make her feel. That's a woman that sticks with you through thick and thin. That woman deserves to be a queen. Then you can be a king, you have your dynasty, and you share the fruits of your labor. But the other one is a princess woman. You're a king, you've built your dynasty, you've built your entire legacy, you've done all the work yourself. A, a princess just comes in and wants to reap the benefits, reap the rewards. But the thing is with princesses is princesses, you gotta share us with other women, other concubines. So if you wanna be a princess, cool, but just know that you're gonna share this man. But if you really wanna go through the mud with a man and pick a good man that has potential, who has ambition, you stick with him through the thick and thin, then you can be a queen. But you can only be a queen Starting from the bottom, you can't just be a queen just getting plucked out. You got to start from the bottom. Because the women in the states right now are being raised without accountability. They're being raised like the princesses, and they're being conditioned to be entitled for doing nothing. Just by existing, they're owed something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they think their bodies are, are kind of their worth. But the thing is, a lot of these women are taught what to expect from a man, but they're never, they're never taught what men expect from them. That's the sad part, is a lot of these ladies know that... A man should do X, Y, Z, but they have no idea what they should do for a man. Like cook and clean, but I got the kooka. That's all they think. He's broke. Look mm -hmm. at him. Look at him. Seems like a great start to a date, doesn't it? Let me take you home. Let me take you back home. Home? Let me take you yeah, home. Because she certainly doesn't deserve a date. Back home, let me get, uh, yourself a cup of noodles. Cup of noodles. <laughs> Love it. You want to take me home? Yeah, I'm taking you home. I look like this in your car right now and you want to take me home. Yeah. I'm going to be nice. You sure about that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you, you can get any other day. Look at you. you You're not all that. You can take me on the and take me on the right? I like this guy. You can, you can get that at any so, time, right? So now we're not going on the date because you don't want to pay more than Starbucks. Oh, it's not bad. So, money's no option. so if money's no option, then why are we going on a date? <laughs> like an actual date? Because one, you trying to put me on blast. Like, you got your phone now, filming this inter interaction right now. Oh. Yeah. I thought I was getting pranked at this point. Like, it feels like it's not real because I've never had a grown man take me to Starbucks for a date. What is this, high school? You've had a grown man in general. Facts. Bro, and she's mid at best. <laughs> Talking about never had a man take me on Starbucks. Starbucks is your Starbucks quality. You know, you're acting well. I appreciate it. You're expecting me to take me to a $5 restaurant. Okay, you know what? 
I'm gonna do you one better. I'm not even gonna take you home. No, you don't. Any, any dude can come and get you and take you out, right? Okay, cool. Let me, let me go ahead and make sure that's the case. Um, Are you serious right yep, now? Yeah, yeah. Ladies, take a lesson. Let her get an Uber, bruh. <laughs> For those of you that like to act entitled to everything, just remember, that could be you. I hate to break it to you. I, I think that we've just got a, a very, very selfish culture of women. And to any women out there that say I have internalized misogyny or anything like that, that would require that I have a problem with women worldwide. I do not have a problem with women worldwide. I have a problem with Western women. And if you think that I'm just like making this up out of nowhere, reflect on the fact that there are Western men that are flying out east to find wives. Are Eastern men coming out west to find wives? No. Oh my God. <laughs> I've never even thought about it that way. She's got a mad point though. Guys from the Philippines aren't like, man, I got to get to the U.S. to get one of these American women. <laughs> <laughs> this woman is preaching. I've seen her before on the Whatever Podcast. She's so based. Where in the world are men flying out in droves to marry American women. Nobody wants us. Why? We're big. We're selfish. We don't want to hear anything. You can't tell me to eat less. You can't tell me to change my life. You can't tell me it's not about me. She hit I mean, the nail so on true. the head. The big backs, big back, big back. the bad diets, the entitlement, the not taking care of yourself, the body positivity. It's all so bad. We should start calling body positivity health risks because like the bigger you are, the the worse your cholesterol is. You know, it, you, like you don't get healthier the bigger you get. Three. Are you single? I am now. What do you mean? Uh, I had a wife. Now I don't have a wife. How do you go from having a wife to not having a wife? Uh, I went on deployment to Okinawa, Japan. My wife fucked the dude one week into that deployment. Now I don't have one. Well, how long were? Oh, shout out to all the guys that are in the the military. Appreciate your service, man. Um, Cass, a lot of her family was in the military. And um, some some folks that we know had a couple, a few Jodies. And uh, that's where I learned the term Jody. Um, these are basically guys that come in and buck military wives while other guys are on deployment. So Jodies are a real thing. It's sad. It's so sad. We're here together. I've known her my whole life. Since I was like elementary school, the whole way on to high school. Joined the Navy, married the girl. Now we're here single i'm sorry to hear that bro it is what it is did she beg for you back she did yeah what'd you tell her i said you got to be out by december she was out by december that was it how much did you spend on the ring for her uh 6k six thousand dollars six thousand dollars and you thought you were getting yeah no no quality there yep so could you see yourself getting married again probably not these girls now don't tell the truth about nothing just do your thing. I just found out that the most. Well, I don't know. I kind of got my own philosophy on that. If you let somebody else ch change the way you think and change the way you trust, they're your master. Mike Tyson has a quote about this. He's like, if someone else can change you, they're your master. So like in this scenario, if this woman can change him and make him not want to be in a relationship or not be married, she's kind of his master. Like don't let somebody else change who you really are. If you really believe in relationships and you want to be in a relationship, cool, do it. Don't let somebody else change you. Cause somebody that can, can, can change you and can control you is your master. Um, just take accountability and be like, you know what? I picked her. I picked a bad woman. I was with her for a long time. And most, this is why I don't like these really, really long, long-term relationships. Like I've been with her since elementary school, fifth grade. You've been with this girl, bro. No, she wants to go out there and test the waters. She wants to see what she been missing. Big boy. She wants to go out there and see what's going on. She never got to have that 304 phase. And a lot of women want to have a 304 phase. If your girl wants to have a 304 face, she belongs to the streets, though. She's a runner. She's a track star. This is why I say, man, like, I really, I, as, as far as guys go, I say don't get into a really serious relationship until you're, like, in your late 20s. Go out there and see what's going on. Learn about yourself. Love yourself until you start getting into a real, like, serious relationship. And even then, date this girl for many years before you wife her up. Don't date a girl for six months and wife her up a year, wife her up two years. Three-year minimum, bro. Three-year minimum.
prominent hormone when you're on your period is testosterone. So when you're acting emotional on your period, you're literally acting like a man. Uh, wrong. Here's a little biology lesson for you. The most emotional time is when she's PMSing, which is usually one to two weeks before her menstrual period, which is exactly when estrogen levels peak in the days leading up to ovulation, which is the PMS period. You don't even know your own body and still try to use it to weaponize it against men somehow. <laughs> Why don't you go call your f- I have never seen a woman love it. make a broke man rich. But I've seen plenty of men make broke women rich. Preach. Do you think that we have a problem in society? We definitely do. We got many of them. But why is it that, like, a woman will never stay with a broke man, but a broke man has no problem, like, providing and building up a broke woman? Because the thing is, is, like, nowadays, most broke women don't even think they're broke. Uh, they just think that they're dating the wrong man. <laughs> That's so true, though. <laughs> But then they'll look at a guy who's like working fucking 60 hours a week at a job that doesn't really pay that much, but he's doing his fucking best. And she'll look at him and be like, that's broke boy energy. No, that's that's hubby energy, actually. That's that's fucking husband material, actually. I feel like as women, we have such a like strong desire to be taken care of that we forget that like there are <laughs> men are human beings. Um, Women are way less committed. Yeah, we're not ATMs. Committed to relationships than men. And this is why marriages are falling apart. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Run saying. that back, Turbo. What? Are way less committed to relationships than human beings. Um. Women are way less committed to relationships than men. And okay, this is why marriages are falling apart. Yes, and you guys initiate divorce 70 to 80% of the time, 90% of your college, college educated. Keep it going. We're not allowed to say that. Seatbelts on. Buckle up. I will say it again. Women are less committed to relationships than men. Roughly 70% of divorces are initiated by women. They are willing to throw the towel in sooner. And the Nazis will try to convince you that women do this because of men. Because for them, the equation is always men equals evil. Now, imagine if we took men out of the equation entirely. Oh wait, we don't have to imagine that at all. We have that data. We have yeah, to divorce- say lesbian divorces, bro. It's crazy. Rates for lesbian couples. Lesbians have the highest divorce rates in the country. It turns out that if you have twice the women in a relationship, you also have twice the chance of divorce. You couldn't write it if you tried. Oh, there you go. I'm a married lesbian. Oh, Lord. I'm what y'all would call a stud, but to be honest, I want a divorce and want to switch up to dating men. These women these days are looking for parents and not partners. Mm. They just Ooh, expect parents and not partners. They just want to be taken care of. I agree with that. Expect you to pay for everything and spoil them as if God put you on this earth to spoil them. Never been attracted to a man in my life. That's crazy. They got the stud switching sides. <laughs> That's crazy work. Loki, free. Sit. Does somebody want a carrot? Wait. Free. They got the stud switching sides. That is crazy work, my man. We're gonna dive more into this lottery winner guy. Uh, I just got put onto this, so we're gonna watch this other Should video they? that's linked to this. Ex-wife of a man who won $273 million in the lottery gets some of the jackpot. After all, <sighs> during their 15-year marriage, she supported him because he didn't have a steady job. Well, now the lottery winner's ex is speaking out in an exclusive interview with Ara Les Trent. She's the just-divorced wife whose ex-husband won $273 million. $273 million, Chad! Chat, let me know. What would be the first thing you would buy with 273 big bones? Yo, yeah. I'd probably pay off the house. Might get me a little McLaren or something. A little Lambo. Billion dollars in the lottery. Mike Mursky never had a steady job in their 15-year marriage. We had a dog. He took care of the dog. And when they divorced five months ago, she was working, ordered to pay him, him alimony. <laughs> now at age... <laughs> Oh my god, my man is up one. He's 53. This regular Joe is mega rich, leading to all sorts of debate. What's the right thing he should do? He should give his wife 20% after. At least 20? 20, 20, huh? 15 years, or at least 15% a percent uh, I'm gonna year. go with half. Straight hair, come on now, bruh. Oh! <laughs> Now, in this exclusive interview, we're hearing from Eileen for the first time, and she tells Inside Edition she doesn't want a penny of his winnings. Your ex-husband won over $270 million. You were the breadwinner when you were married. You think you're entitled to any of that? I don't want anybody to misconstrue anything that 
I'm coming after him because I've heard this from numerous places that I'm coming after him. I'm taking him back to court. I want part of his lottery winnings. I don't. She does, however, want the alimony payments to come to a stop. The only thing that I would like to see. She's still paying alimony? <laughs> Okay, I kind of feel bad for her. He's got $273 million. She doesn't need to pay alimony anymore. Is obviously termination of spousal support. What was your first reaction? I had already seen that somebody had purchased a ticket at that store, and I thought there's no way it could be him, and sure enough, it was. I was shocked. <laughs> Eileen says the lottery jackpot doesn't change the way she feels about Mike. Wow. The marriage did not end on a happy note. Now that you have money, it doesn't mean that I'm... I would want to come back. Mike reacted this way. $270 million does not make me appealing to her. That's what she said in the New York Post interview. And do you believe her? I don't care. Don't care. She Darn. didn't have... Based. I don't care. That's crazy work. I have a chance of getting back with me, and I don't want her back, so... We asked divorce lawyer Kelly Chang Rickert for her take. He bought this ticket post the divorce several months after the divorce was finalized. He bought it with his separate money. He won its separate property and she has absolutely no right to it. Now check out this wild coincidence. That New Jersey convenience store where Mike bought the winning ticket, that's where he proposed to Eileen 15 years ago. He proposed to her at a gas station. Look, you go to your place. I'm sorry, bro, but a gas station? Yep right in the same store. That is a crazy story. It is a crazy story. Talking about karma, though. Wow. You might think Eileen has the worst timing ever, but maybe her luck is about to change. That's, that is wild, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's jump into the subreddit. This is a post Welcome from to channel time. Uh, uh, Des. We've got videos today from It's Complicated Channel. Single by choice. Welcome back to Channel Time. Really, it's your host, oh, Lucas Copen. I'm hearing Please multiple like, things going. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. The channel. What Channel's is going on? What is going on? Why is it? Why is it playing? It's not even supposed to be playing. All right, here we go. The homo stuff. How do you know whether to blame men for not making enough effort or women for not showing enough gratitude? <laughs> I feel like it goes both ways. Personally, for me, it goes both ways. Men. Bro, what is that? <laughs> men tend to not put effort into something they don't think is worth it. But some men tend to play women a lot of the time. So it just really depends. And men don't like putting effort into something they don't find worth it. I think women don't show enough. That wasn't a bad take. Gratitude towards guys now nowadays because like there's so many guys around. But like um, guys now nowadays don't know. You do realize there's actually more women than men around. Just saying. Oh, gratitude towards women because I think they're they're like gay or something. Women. I love it. The homophobia is crazy. The homophobia is wild. Straight to the the, the homo stuff. Huh? That's what I'm saying. It's always right it's always a homophobia, dude. I think men need to do more. Men think women expect too much. Which is it? Women expect too much. Mm. Is it hard to satisfy men or women? Women, 100 percent. 100 percent. I feel like it's more hard to satisfy women, because women will have a lot of needs. They want to be. Taken it looks like she's got too many teeth for her mouth. Taken care of. They want to be loved emotionally, physically, and materialistically. We are picky. Yeah, we agreed. are particular. And is that a snake? And men can try, 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 but sometimes. See, this is like a mother and daughter. I'm almost positive. See, she, like, this is the, the state that we're in now, guys. Just to show I mean, this. he's got a point. Yeah, it's like mom and daughter going out like the same pencil eyebrows. <laughs> Mom's wearing a snake. More than likely a... Single mom. It's just generational trauma, bro. Trauma bonded. To the street to do whatever it is they're going to go do. Sometimes they have to try a little bit harder because we have our ways, we have our boundaries, we have the past, and we have our experiences. Is it harder to satisfy men or women? Women. Women, because they're so difficult. So then why should men even bother trying to please women if they're never satisfied? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Logic has left the chat. I can't get over those caterpillars on her eyes right now. Bro, yeah, guys. it's the umbrellas, like, man. It's like that... Women really do be thinking that stuff makes them look good. That stuff does not. But she's got the butterfly there, and then the butterfly's there, and it's just, it's so, mo oh my gosh, aggressive. aggressive. They're satisfied. Some Only some, some women. So they're why like, not? they're too entitled. Yeah. 
You might as well have spoiler. When you like a guy, do you make any effort to impress him or do you just show up? If I really like him, then I make the most effort to like, do my makeup good, do my hair good. Like, I want him to treat me like I'm high value and I feel kind of feel like I'm only high value. You can't be high value with the bull nose ring. <laughs> Ever. That's an, you automatically exempt yourself from being high value. If I look good. Why do so many women think looking your best is going above and beyond when it's really just the bare minimum? It's a prerequisite, huh? <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, I feel like men only really care about what you look like. No. This no is what uh, bro, God, no. We care way more about that. And I've said this before, chat. Great clip. Um, I like this guy's channel. I think it's 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 the it's complicated channel. But your appearance is what gets my attention. Your personality is what keeps my attention, and your character is what makes me fall in love with you. If you don't have all of those things, though, your appearance is only going to get you so far. And women are marketers, or men and men are salesmen. So, ladies, if you're just marketing that you're just a piece of meat and you're hot, that's what we're going to buy. We're not going to treat you, you know, seriously. We're not going to want to like date to marry you. And it's just like makeup is just a prerequisite. Looking good is a prerequisite. Being aesthetically pleasing is a prerequisite. Like there's a, so many things that go into it that they, th it's so funny to me that they think that just looking good is just enough. It's so wild to me, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? He's just looking around so confused. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.